Our second speaker is Erica Georgiades. Erica has been the director of the School of the Wisdom since August 2021 and director of the European School of Theosophy since 2018. A member of the TS since 1991, she has worked at the International Archives in Adyar from 1994 to 1996. Erica is a candidate for a Master of Research degree in Religious Experience at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. She also holds a postgraduate degree with merit in ancient religions at the same institution, and also a Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Philosophy and Psychological Studies. Erica is also a deep ecologist, animal rights activist, and advocates pro-personhood rights to non-human animals. She lives in Athens, Greece. The title of Erica's talk is Replace the Fleeting with the Everlasting. Greetings to all attendees of the 146th International Convention of the Theosophical Society. The title of this talk is inspired by a sentence found in the Voice of the Silence that says, open quote, replace the fleeting with the everlasting, close quote. In the same work, we also find the following, open quote, in order to become the knower of all self, meaning the universal self or Atman, thou hast first of self to be the knower. To reach the knowledge of that self, thou hast to give up self to non-self, being to non-being, close quote. Atman is described in the Theosophical Glossary as pure consciousness or the cosmic self. To reach the knowledge of Atman, one needs to transcend the sense of selfhood. Many religions and philosophical traditions suggest that in order to transcend the sense of selfhood, we need to live in the now, in the present moment. The present moment is not, however, linked to space and time as we know it. It is, in fact, linked to eternity, as we will see very soon. But first, let us make a short digression into the philosophy of space and time, in which we will find out, among other ideas, the notions of presentism and eternalism. Presentism supports the notion that space has three dimensions and is temporal. Things exist in relation to time. This is the conventional view of time based on the notion that the past is gone, the future is not yet here, only the present moment is important. Within this context, uh, the past and future are meaningless because they do not exist. Based on this perspective, if we outline what exists, we have the following, you, the computer, Acropolis or the caves of Ajanta in India exist. However, Socrates and Buddha do not exist, nor any future station on the planet Mars. Objects lacking the property of being present do not exist and are meaningless. Eternalism, on the other hand, supports the notion that space has many dimensions and is non-temporal. It is deprived of properties such as the past, present and future. Things exist without relation to time. The past and the future are meaningful and important as the present moment. Eternalism is anti-meaninglessness and suggests, for example, that every act of kindness, no matter how small, exists in eternity. Everything is profoundly meaningful. Objects from both the past and the future exist. Non-present objects like Socrates, Buddha, and the future station on the planet Mars exist now, even though they are not currently present. They may not be in the same space, time, vicinity that we find ourselves in right now, but they should nevertheless be on the list of all existing things. In eternalism, the passage of time is an illusion. 
reality comprises the whole of space-time. I shall make a brief disclaimer. Please notice that eternalism as mentioned here is not re related to the Buddhist doctrine of Sasatavada in Pali or in Sanskrit Sasvata Dristi, usually translated as eternalism, a kind of thinking rejected by the Buddha in the Nikayas involving the belief in an eternal self. Instead, it is linked to the illusion, um, linked to the notion of time being an illusion, as it has been supported, for example, by many modern scientists such as Mark Taggart. And even uh, Madame Blavatsky also suggests in the secret doctrine, open quote, that time is only an illusion produced by the succession of our states of consciousness as we travel through the eternal duration, close quote. HPB is an eternalist, not a presentist. Um, the theosophical teachings are inserted within an eternalist approach, but what is eternity? Blavatsky links eternity to the notion of duration and explain that, open quote, duration is, it has neither beginning nor end, how can you call that which has neither beginning nor end time? Duration is beginningless and endless. Time is finite. Close quote. Krishnamurti was also an eternalist, as we can see here. Open quote. Is there a meditation which has no direction, which is not conscious, deliberate? Find out. That requires great energy, attention passion, not lust, that is just. Then that very passion, energy, the intensity of it is silence, not contrived silence. It is the immense silence in which time, space is not. Then there is that which is holy, eternal. Krishnamurti is describing a state we could say similar to Samadhi. It's a state of consciousness that there is no sense of separation, selfhood or independent existence, but only pure awareness described in the voice of the silence as a state of being or, a, or a, as a state of consciousness that occurs when the fleeting is replaced by the everlasting, the transitory replaced by the eternal. Having briefly shown the difference between presentism and eternalism, as well as how the notion of eternity is emphasized by both Krishnamurti and Madame Blavatsky, as linked to a state of consciousness deprived of the sense of selfhood, we will now see how the eternal and the present moment, an instant, can be reconciled. Consider, for instance, the following words of Get. He is describing a painting that he saw. The marvelous, open quote, the marvelous suppleness with which a dancer moves from one figure to another and provokes our admiration in front of such artistry. It is fixated for a moment so that we can see simultaneously the past, the present, and the future, and we are thus transported into a superterrestrial state. We do not have here with us the painting that Get was observing. Instead, we have the image that you see here, which is a statue symbolizing Shiva's cosmic dance. In looking at the image, even though it's fixated, we can see both past, present, and future. As the hands and legs suggest motion, we can infer the previous step and the one ahead. In this manner, the present image contains both past, present, and the future. That is how when experiencing the present, one also will experience past and future. That's how perhaps an instant is impregnated in eternity with eternity. 
Plato, for example, supported the notion that time is not something that can be measured, but motion. Abstracting time from motion was um, an innovation from Aristotle. The notion that an instant is impregnated with eternity is also found in the Epicurean uh, and the Stoic traditions. For example, Lucretius, a Roman and Epicurean philosopher, wrote that, open quote, the sage places himself with the eternal nature, which is independent of time, close quote. In this manner, the present moment, one instant, becomes the living symbol of the unexplorable, as we cannot explore eternity, triggering a profound feeling of union with a reality that transcends the limits of the self. Such states of consciousness are often experienced by mystics and sages and may be described as cosmic flights. The view of a sage gazing infinity, as this image suggests, who in an effortless state of tranquility contemplates the infinity of space. The importance of living in the present moment is also, has been also emphasized, for example, in the Hermetic tradition. Asclepius, a disciple of Hermes Trismegistus, in his perfect discourse in Greek, Logos Telius says, open quote, Now, be completely present. Give me your whole attention with all the understanding that you are capable of with all the subtlety you can master. For the teaching about divinity requires a divine concentration of consciousness, if it is to be understood. It is just like a torrential river plunging headlong down from the heights, so violently that with its rapidity and speed, it outstrips the attention, not only of whoever is listening, but also of whoever is speaking. Asclepius is showing how one may reach the knowledge of divine wisdom, Brahma Vidya, which is by first pointing out the importance of being present, full alert, paying attention to the moment, to the instant impregnated with eternity. To do that is required divine concentration, dharana, because divine wisdom is like, he says, a torrential river, whose flowing waters move in such a speed that if we are not alert, we cannot keep up with it. He compares the experience of, actually the experience of theosophy, divine wisdom, Brahma Vidya, as being something at first as a violent torrential river. We could think of a river flowing down into a giant waterfall. The closer we get to the waterfall, the rapids become more intense and violence. Violent because it turns apart all preconceived ideas. Everything you took for granted, all crystallized thoughts are shattered, violently interrupted, blocked. Furthermore, in the Corpus Hermeticus, there is the following quote. My child, he who listens must perceive the same as he who speaks. Share his awareness. He must breathe together with him. Share the same spirit. His hearing must be sharper than the voice of he who speaks. The seeker who is listening perceives the same as the teacher who speaks. Both are in tune and sharing a state of pure awareness. Notice the text says they breathe together, share the same spirit. The Persian word for intimate or companion is ham dam, meaning one you share a breath with or one you breathe with. Kingsley mentions that the same words is used in Sufism as meaning being of the same breath. 
they need to be tuned with each other in a state of shared awareness. That's why the one who speaks share his or her awareness. In the case, the one who speaks may not be only the a, a, a human teacher or a superhuman teacher, but also nature, life around us. And we have to learn how to listen. Uh, no wonder why one uh, of the last works of Madame Blavatsky was entitled The Voice of the Silence. This is very telling, the title. Now, Krishnamurti described awareness as, open quote, observation without choice, condemnation or justification, silent observation from, from, from which there arises understanding without the experiencer and the experienced. In this awareness, which is passive, there is no end in view to be gained, and there is no becoming the me and the mind, close quote. Krishnamurti is describing samadhi, pure awareness, during which the observer and the observed are one. In this state, there is no sense of separation, nor of selfhood or independent existence. Samadhi is the highest state of mental concentration that people can achieve while bound to the body and which unites them with the highest reality. Self-consciousness, union with the spiritual monad by intense and profound spiritual contemplation or meditation. The main challenge is to be able to focus on the eternal or the eternal now is letting go the sense of selfhood. And this can occur only in a profound state of tranquility and divine concentration during which the person becomes passive. In order to understand what is meant, I can only ask you to try to recall, to remember a moment of contemplation you experienced in nature or another setting during which you completely lost the sense of self, space and time. In that moment, you had a glimpse of Samadhi. Many of us have experienced it. That's also a living experience of the divine, of the sacred, when the observer and the observed become one. Most of us never learned or were taught how to achieve that state. It just happened during a moment of effortless tranquility. I suggest you to try to focus on the now. Then you stop and focus on the eternal for some time. Feel the difference between these two approaches. It is irrelevant whether one knows or not what the eternal is. What is important is that this the shift from the idea that the present is the only thing that matters as past and future are gone, to the idea that the present is impregnated with eternity. Thank you. Thank you, Erica, for a most inspiring and comprehensive presentation. I particularly enjoyed your comparative approach, illustrating ways in which the eighth and final limb of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, Samadhi, has been described. I also love the use of the image of Shiva Nataraj as a symbol of past, present and future as he dances upon Apas Mara, the dwarf of evil and ignorance. This illustrating how an instant may perhaps be impregnated with eternity through alignment to the rhythms of the cosmos. <laughs>